Hi guys and welcome back to Feed the Beast Infinity. This is Casual Kiwi and I was just wanted to give you guys a bit of a heads up on probably a way on holiday at this stage. So if the videos don't come as fast and frequent as they usually do, um, don't worry, I'll be back in a couple more weeks and we'll be back into things. I've got a few scheduled but I've probably only got one video scheduled a week to come up while I'm away. I normally try and do at least two uh, but I've sort of run into a bit of pressure before before I leave, um, so things are quite busy at the moment. But this episode, I want a quick crack in and show you what I've done. I've done a few things around my base. I've just re sort of reconfigured, reconfigured my ME system so that it's all in the wall. And we have oh, we have got it all facaded up and over the terminal, so it all looks all lovely and nice. Uh, so we've got our normal crafting terminal here. We have got our interface terminal here with all of these good things, and I'm going to show you these guys very very soon. And then we have got our um, pattern terminal over here. So, not this one, our interface terminal here. We've got some encoded patterns for a few alloys on our alloy smelter. Some glass on our other alloy smelter that's set to just furnace mode. Um, we have got a special little doohickey which I did copy from Direwolf20. I will admit, it's a direct copy pretty much. I've changed a couple of little things, but it is his design. Um, and then under here we've got the molecular, assemb uh, molecular assembler, all the interfaces connected to that, showing all of these good things. And then the sagmal showing us all the dusts, um, coal powder, all those good things. Um, so you notice here I have got certus quartz seeds available to be crafted in the molecular assembler because they are a just a standard crafting pattern by combining whatever, nether quartz and sand or, or something along those lines, excuse me, to get the seeds. And then we have a, a pattern for crafting these here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly duck out of here and I'm going to say fl oop, Fluix crystals. So I'm going to say we want some pure Fluix crystals. I'm going to take those ones out. We've got zero in the system. I'm going to say we want six. Hit next. I'm going to hit start. Now what we're going to do is we're going to quickly duck over here and show you that it is crafting six. We've got one of those stored. And then I'm going to head downstairs and I'm going to quickly show you what I have set up. So it's a bit of a little system. We've got an energy acceptor here sending power through these smart cables. It didn't need to be smart cables, but anyway, to four crystal growth accelerators. Now they are connected up with some redstone wire so that they switch off via some Steve's factory manager stuff here. So this is the controller. And it's set up with a redstone emitter so that when it senses anything on top of this um, valve down the bottom here, under there, item valve, that when it senses anything on top of there, it's going to allow power, or send a redstone signal, sorry, to the end IO cables, which allows this to power up and powers up these guys. Now the item valve allows things to pass through it. So we have set it so that when these crystals reach full growth, they will pass through the item valve and then in to this chest via the item manager, Steve's factory manager. Once they go into the chest, we've got an automatic output straight up and into the ME interface. And boom, they end up back in our system. When that does this, the item valve senses that there is no item sitting on top of this, so it switches off the redstone signal and kills the energy acceptor. So the crystal growth accelerator accelerators switch off. Um, pretty basic uh, but this here the machine inventory manager from Steve's factory manager if you're not used to it does take a bit of setting up um, and I've never used it before so direct copy like I say of Direwolf 20's video um, pretty neat stuff I if you haven't watched anything from Direwolf 20 check him out he's pretty damn good um, so this ME interface here has just got the crystals in it and patterns and then that dumps the stuff straight into the chest, into a hopper, and then this is an open crate from Britannia. So the open crate is, if I go like so, and it should be this guy here, it's pretty basic. It's just an upside down U or an N made out of living wood from Britannia. Now, the great thing about the open crate over a standard dropper is that it drops things directly down. It drops them straight down into the water on top of the item valve, and as you see, our stuff has switched off. If we nick back upstairs, nip back, not nick back, 
we look in here, we should have six pure flux crystals. Look at that. It has automated the process completely down to crafting the seeds, growing them in a short amount of time, and switching off the power to the crystal growth accelerator so we're not wasting energy. So this is a pretty badass build. I really, really like it. Uh, so if we duck down here, you'll see that it's not too, too complicated. Basically, you've got the machine inventory manager, you've got some machine cable, Underneath the water you have the item valve which just sits on another piece of this inventory cable and then it goes across and I probably didn't need all of this but uh, you have a redstone emitter connected via cable there and then I just have this piece of cable probably what didn't I require I probably didn't require this one. oh no that one's linking that one so I did require all of it I think but it's coming out and around so that the chest is then sitting on a piece of cable as well so it recognizes it and we just have some basic, we'll just come out of there and block that up, one, two, three. Inside here we have two triggers set up. So the first trigger is just set to one second, I haven't changed anything like that on interval, none of that, it's all standard. And then in condition you have the inventory and that is set to the item valve. So there's the chest available but you don't want to select it, you select the item valve and then its target is up and the items you click on these and then type in seed and you want to grab certus quartz seed, nether quartz seeds and fluix seeds and then with those guys when they are there you want the emitter this guy here you select him the redstone emitter to have strong power with a fixed strength so you want to check fixed strength of 15 and then there'll be nothing in the pulse we do not don't need a pulse if you select that it will emit a pulse so we don't need that and then this emitter is the opposite basically so the redstone emitter doesn't matter on the side we want strong power all sides and then we want a fixed redstone strength of zero and that's it that is it so that turns the crystal growth accelerators off and on when it sees seeds on top of this guy the item valve basic okay the next one is a trigger yet again exactly the same i haven't adjusted anything in there that is basically as soon as you click on create trigger that is exactly how that will be nothing has changed and then on the input you want inventories you want the item valve selected the target is up and then the items we want pure certus quartz pure fluix crystal pure nether quartz and fluix crystals so we can therefore drop our nether quartz redstone and whatever the other thing is and that you make standard fluix crystals out of into there and we want that whitelisted and then on the output we want our inventory to be our chest oops we want our target up I don't think that mattered too much and we want our items to be a blacklist like so and that's all it is basic 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 once you actually figure it out and not throw it so you go, can go ahead and set that all up with the ME system put some patterns in and then it's just going to drop everything straight down into there filters through comes back out into the interface and ends up back in your system pretty neat um, so I'm pretty stoked about that it works really well and I'm glad I copied him okay next things next I I want to make a bunch of stuff um, I've gone ahead and chucked a bit of stuff here in my inventory I'm going to show you how to use the pattern terminal again just in case I sort of glazed over it in my um, AE2 sort of video because I know I didn't explain things terribly well there so I want to make some well I, I want to make the enchanter from Ender IO. I want to make this guy here. Now it requires dark steel. We don't have any dark steel, so we are going to do something like this by putting in that guy. Is it set, set to alloys only? We're going to put one of those, one of those, and one of those in there. And it's going to cook us up a piece of dark steel. It is going to take a freaking long time. I'm not sure where it shows you the power output. I'd have to look in the in the um, recipes there but we're gonna grab that guy 
as he comes out before he disappears. Come on, got him. And we need, what do we need? Ooh, not in there. We need a piece of iron and a piece of obsidian. Like so, and obsidian like so. And then we want to go in this guy and we want to say that one iron, we want a processing pattern, one iron, one coal dust, and one obsidian equals one dark steel ingot. And then we just want to encode pattern, take that guy, and we can just go straight into here. We could go around the back into the interface if we wanted to, but we want to go to the alloy smelter that has got alloys in it, and we want to throw that guy in. Easy as that. And now, if we go in here and here and type dark iron and hit craft, we can say we want a four more, hit next, and start. Now, this guy should be crafting some. Look at that. Freaking awesome. I love AE systems. I really do. One of my favorite things. Okay, so that's going to automatically craft that. I think we needed five for the enchanter. Now, the next thing we want to work on is we want to work on getting our ender quarry set up. So, I have got enough end. I've got nine ender pearls. I think that is enough. I think I've worked out that I need four, five, six, seven ender pearls to make an ender quarry. I could well be wrong, but we're going to have a crack. Now, we've got also all of these enchanted books, and some of them have got some pretty damn good enchantments on them from our fisher outside um, now i want to copy those and i completely forgot that i wanted to copy those because i don't want to waste them and i now cannot remember what mod i was going to use for doing it it is the printing ma typing machine type setter or something from bibliocraft i think so we're going to need to look into that um, biblio so we want i think the typesetting table and the printing press is what we need i think Ooh, typewriter hmm i'm pretty sure those are the two things we need so i'm going to make one of those which we're short of some slabs we still don't have enough okay so wood that some normal wood like so that many and then we want biblio craft again and i have moved thing fancy workbench this guy type setting table oh what are we missing still a print press chase okay we can make one of those and then we're not going to have enough to make we are just so a type setting table done okay and now we want a printing press now oh this is expensive Iron blocks. One, two, three. We want an iron pressure plate. We'll take one of those. And oh a blaze rod. Ooh. It's getting pricey. Ah, oh, we still don't have enough bloody slabs. Okay. Wood. We're gonna make a bunch of slabs. That'll do. Okay. Um we're gonna quickly craft some standard wood too. Okay, so back to Biblio. Oh. And we want the printing press of that guy there. So it's going to use up one of our blaze rods, but we do have a spawner all sort of cordoned off, so it shouldn't be too bad. The atlas, the big writing book, empty recipe book, slotted book, name tester. Hmm. Redstone Volume 1. Okay, I'm not sure what I need. I really don't know. So we're just going to have a crack at this. We're going to set this up along this back wall. This is where I was wanting to sort of have my enchanting stuff and those sorts of things. So we're going to throw that there for now. We'll throw, oh, jeez, that was loud. Almost scared me. That down there. Now, we obviously need some things. We're going to need some ink, I'm guessing. Um, but we will top biblio and see what we require if painting press oak painting frame 
Sword pedestal, dispel. Hmm. Cookie jar? That could come in handy, couldn't it? I'm gonna say we're gonna need some ink. I don't know if we need ink files. We'll take those. We're probably gonna need some books, I would imagine, like so, and we'll see what we can do with that. Does it need power? Hmm. <laughs> I'm wondering if we should leave this for another day and I will carry on and do some other things. We might leave this for another day and we'll, I'll carry on and do other things for now. What I will show you is I need some paper. Of course I have no paper, for frick's sake. Because I've set up these things here. I'm getting rid of the bones. I want some of you. And I want some paper, mother truckers, like that. And then, do we have any ink? We do not, but we have some empty bottles. Can throw those away. We can look in here again. Ink vials. Oh, we only have one. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, can we make one? We can. Two ink bottles. Fantastic. Fan freaking tastic. Okay, and then we want some leather. Like so. So we want one, two, leather. Nice. So we've got paper, ink bottles, and leather. And we're going to have a little look at Miscraft. So I've been trying to create a few things from Miscraft, and I have made some worlds but I haven't managed to find any decent ones as of yet. So to get started in Miscraft, you're going to need an ink mixer, a book binder and a writing desk and you can find these in villages um, and in a lot of these guys you can find these forest um, biome pages and things like that um, but I haven't really figured out how to use all that stuff yet. What I have figured out is how to create books. I'm going to throw this guy in here for now and I know that age 5 and age 7 are the ones I've created, created that work not too bad so far. So what you want to do is you want to create an ink vial which was I think a feather, an ink and another ink. You throw that in there and you want to throw a piece of paper in there and that gives you a link panel page. So what you can do with those is you grab a piece of leather and your link panel page outside of anything just in an inventory and you grab it and it creates an unlinked link book and then what you want to do is you this is the absolute first thing this is so important you want to right click that on where you want to be returned to so I'm going to click it right there now this book is linked to that square right there next to my crafting table when I click this it's going to take me right there so I'm right clicking this this is grayed out nothing's going to happen because we're already in the overworld so this is our passage home. If we don't do this, if we don't right click it, you don't get home. You are stuck. You die, you keep dying, you return back to the world you died in without fucking around and fixing it, basically. Um, you're screwed. So you need to do this. And you need to keep it. And then the next thing you want to do is get rid of him and create another one of these bad boys. Another page, like so. Grab him. And then you want to put it in this guy like so and like so and that gives you a descriptive book from miscraft so this is going to be age whatever we're going to put it in there it's going to be age eight is what we're up to so it starts off i think at age two or age one but all of my ages up until now have been really crappy so i have just deleted them okay now the other thing you want to do is you want to take from miscraft a book pedestal or something with you so we'll go Mr. Craft like so and this guy here book stand pretty simple easy to make I want to take one of those because there's a bit of a tricky little thing to these so these books take damage and if they get damaged you cannot get back so by putting them on the stand they are no longer an entity and they no longer take damage if you leave it out in the rain it will take damage um, if you drop it and kick it around and try and pick it up it will take damage you do not want to destroy this book okay next things next we'll get rid of those bottles real quick dunk 
dunk like so and we might actually put our wrench away as well because I don't want to lose that it's not super expensive but it's just a handy thing to not have to make again we're not going to need it where we're going and we shall click on our linky book so right click on it to open on it left click on it to right click one of them click on it to go and then it's going to take a while because it has to load a whole new world that you have never been to before and then be prepared to leave sometimes you may need to leave really fast okay so we've got a pretty nice looking world that does not happen very often does not happen very often at all so that is there you want to hit J and you want to waypoint that sucker so link book save close close nice um, so this is dark but it's full of wood this stuff here is crystal hmm okay I thought that was decay but it is not there's apparently some form of crystal so we're going to take some of that because you never know what that's going to be good for but we might have finally found a decent world to set up our quarry finally nice we've got heaps of endermen we've got a butt ton of trees and it's all flat which is freaking awesome but that is basically how miscraft works I don't know if this age is going to have a day or whether it's just all night. I really don't know. But for now, we're going to head back to our base. This might finally be the world I've been looking for. Really been struggling to find a good one. Okay, so we can head back. That box is going to stay there. That one there to get back to that world is still on the stand. So we are happy. Fantastic. Okay, so I was going to make the ender quarry but I want to copy those books I don't know how so I think what we'll do is we'll finish off and we'll make the enchanter this guy here Kaflunk, from ender io now I have a feeling that it probably requires power so we'll plonk it down over here somewhere for now So what do we need to do here? Recipes. So a book and quill plus gold gives you XP boost one. Protection one. Awesome. So feather fallen, fire protection, blast, aqua affinity, sharpness, thorn, smite, fire respect, efficiency. So it is all of the enchantments. Wow okay that is pretty awesome team so say I want to get book and quill is just some ink a book and a feather so that is where I'm gonna struggle I don't think I have any feathers I do not and let me guess we can't make feathers can we not very easily I'm gonna to need to get me some chickens no kidding team okay so we can't work on that um, bit of a muddly episode, I do apologise. I'm going to see if we can make a glider. I've been wanting to make this for a long time because it is freaking awesome. So we want one of those, like so. Oh, it's made up from two of those and a stick. Okay, another one of those, like so. And that guy, Kaflunk, gives us a hand glider. Awesome. Okay, I've really been wanting this guy for a long time because it is freakishly awesome. We'll sleep. Now I can really, really cover some land. I'm pretty sure that I can equip that. Yep, like so. And we can just blast around without using our jetpack. And then we can just hit jetpack to go up. it's a machine it's an absolute beast this thing they should cover ground so much faster it's not as good as created flight but it's almost there and then the thing is if I scroll off it boom it disappears 
But look how fast we're travelling forward now. So this is just the jetpack. Not really travelling forward fast. What's going on? There we go. And we are going honking. Honking along. Nice. Okay, let's head back. I have got my render dis distance set pretty low, guys. Um, oh, there we go. That's what I was after. So you hold shift. So up, forward, and hold shift, and then you honk along. So normal, shift, and we're off. We're fair humming. Gain height again. Nice. Now this is the way to explore. And find me some chickens. I thought he was attacking me then. Ha! Two feathers. Nice. Any more chickens? There it is. I don't think that gave me any feathers, but okay. Okay, that'll do us. It's got us three feathers. We shall head back to base. Have to say guys, I'm looking forward to my trip, but I'm really going to miss playing Minecraft. I thought about taking a laptop with me, but it just wouldn't be the same. And hey, probably could do with a bit of a break. And we're back. Get in there. Oh, once I get some decent armor or something again with creative flight, it's going to be so much nicer. Just for flying around. But that um, that that glider is going to make life a lot better. Okay, so we need what is it? It was one of these guys, a book and quill. I'm going to give this a crack. We're going to get rid of you. We're going to get some feathers in there paper, sugar canes, and we're going to make a book and quill of this guy. Ooh, book, book binder, that's from Mistcraft, book receptacle, descriptive book. The big, I bet you one of these, a written book? Hmm, uh, anyway, we want a book and quill. I bet you one of these from Bibliocraft tells us how to, that's from Thomcraft, Witchery, which we, uh, anyway, we'll get one of these, flunk, like so, and we're going to craft what? We're going to craft, we don't want XP boost, we want, say, if we do looting. So enchantment cost is eight. Um, we need a hit. No, we'll do efficiency. That takes redstone, something we've got a bunch of. We'll take a stack of that. So I'm pretty sure it was twelve. Twelve gives us efficiency one. So if I put another 12 on, it gives us efficiency 2. Nice. So, oops. Another 12. Efficiency 3, and it costs 13. Another 12. It costs us 20 levels, but it gives us efficiency 4. Wow, this is pretty nice. I like this a lot. So that's going to use 20 levels, but it's going to give us efficiency 4. So if I can collect a bunch of levels, I can get some pretty damn good enchantments just by buying them with redstone and stuff. Wow. So that is how we are probably going to get our magical wood and also via copying books. So we can copy these books and we can also probably remove the enchants off of these. Like this has got Unbreaking 3. 
X XP boost 3 and in breaking 3 um, respiration 3 implosion 4 power 4 there's all sorts of good stuff here um, so I need to figure out how to copy books um, also that's working so how to copy books in this and what is the other thing I probably we need to look at setting up from open blocks Oop, not blocks with an X team open uh, must be no space open blocks we want a little jobby called we want one of those we'll take two for now and we want an XP drain space drain this guy here kaflunk we don't have any iron bars like so an XP drain lovely so what I'm probably going to do is I don't know if I want it there hmm because it is a bit ugly where do I want this guy I want to be able to access it though is the thing and I, I don't like the shower hmm we might stick it oh I don't know we might stick it we'll stick it right there for now and I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that on and see that sucks all our levels out and that way if we die we don't lose all our levels which is great so I'll find a better place for this in between episodes but for now it's gonna go there it's gonna do its thing and then if we need a level all you do is right click bunch of levels nice okay so I will find a better place for that whether it's under the floor and I find a way to right click it to get my levels back to get all this stuff but for now I think I'm gonna call it quits do apologize it has been a bit messy I'm gonna go away and learn some things about copying books with bibliocraft and enchantments and I'll come back next time and we will make ourselves an ender quarry okay thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time